In recent years, there is a narrative about a country that has vanished from history's pages. A nation that was once well known across the world is now lost in the sands of time. Tartaria, Tartary, or Grand Tartaria, has perplexed web academics digging through antique maps dating back to the 15th century. The Tartar Empire is a mystery to historians. The empire was first mentioned in the year 635 by a Byzantine historian, Procopius of Caesarea. He mentions that the emperor of the Tartars had been defeated by Chosroes Tomeu of Persia and his son Kavad, Gungu, had been captured. He writes that the emperor's name was unknown, but he knew that he ruled over an empire with many tribes and provinces. He also knew that they were located in what we know as Eastern Europe, Western Siberia, and Central Asia today. What is now known as Tartary is not an easy place to get to from Constantinople, so it is unclear how Procopius got all this information about them, if he never visited these lands himself, or if he did, why he didn't mention. Fasten up and join us as we investigate the beginnings of the mighty Tartarian Empire, proof of a lost empire. Tartarian's existence is founded on four pillars. From the mid-13th century through the 19th century, Tartary was a general word encompassing northern Asia, including modern-day Russia, the remains of civilization, according to Tartarian truthers, rather than a general word relating to different people groupings. Another crucial component of this idea is the mudslide, the subterranean window wells and cellar entrances of houses from the period are cited by Tartarian conspiracy theorists. The architectural styles known as Boarts and Second Empire are the most extensive proof of Tartaria. Throughout the 19th and early 20th centuries, architecture was renowned internationally. Surprisingly, a tendency known as brutalism emerged shortly after these forms, in which buildings were constructed only as utilitarian constructions that were frequently exceedingly boring. According to Tartarian truthers, our civilization was not evolved enough to establish the Beaux Arts style, so we repurposed these artifacts from an old society. The theory's final edge is constructed by modifying texts from the Christian Bible to suit the theorists' needs. These explanations are a little shaky, but they aid in the development of more imaginative theories. Was the history or Tartaria deleted? According to Wikipedia, Tartaria was a generic word for the Tartars, and Europeans had little understanding of them. But the book written by Giovanni da Pian del Carpine in 1252 contains a considerable study on the Tartars and their kingdom, theoretical levels. The Tartarian legend has numerous levels. The first, nearly common element is that a powerful empire in Northern Asia has perished through the passage of time. The second hidden tier is that this empire ruled over the whole planet establishing a one-world or almost one-world governance. The final level is that this empire was not only vast but also technically sophisticated. They possess technology unlike anything we can fathom, and society's design demonstrates their enormous capabilities. The variants of the theory are intriguing to say the least. Tartary had its own language, flag, crest, its own emperor, and of course its own people universal language, Tartary, a vast country in the northern parts of Asia, bounded by Siberia on the north and west. This is called Great Tartary. The Tartars who lie south of Muscovy and Siberia are those of Astrakhan, Circassia, and Dagestan, situated northwest of the Caspian Sea. The Kamak Tartars, who lie between Siberia and the Caspian Sea. The Uzbek Tartars and Mughals, who lie north of Persia and India, and lastly, those of Tibet, who lie northwest of China. Encyclopedia Britannica. Greek mythology Tartarus is both a deity and a place in the underworld. In ancient Orphic sources and in the mystery schools, Tartarus is also the unbounded first existing entity from which the light and the cosmos are born. In the Greek poet Hesiod's Theogony, c. 700 BC, Tartarus was the third of the primordial deities, following after Chaos and Gaia, Earth, and preceding Eros, and was the father, by Gaia, of the monster Typhon. According to Hyginus, Tartarus was the offspring of Etha and Gaia. Roman mythology in Roman mythology, 
Tartarus is the place where sinners are sent. Virgil describes it in the Aeneid as a gigantic place, surrounded by the flaming river Phlegethon and triple walls to prevent sinners from escaping from it. It is guarded by a hydra with fifty black gaping jaws, which sits at a screeching gate protected by columns of solid adamantine, a substance akin to diamond, so hard that nothing will cut through it. Inside, there is a castle with wide walls and a tall iron turret. Tisiphon, one of the Aranais who represents revenge, stands guard sleepless at the top of this turret lashing a whip. There is a pit inside which is said to extend down into the earth twice as far as the distance from the lands of the living to Olympus. Tartarians cover up. Tartarian researchers claim a slew of incidents as proof of a cover-up campaign for Tartaria's dominion. Most late 19th century battles were viewed as attempts to demolish most of the surviving buildings. Followers also look at world's fairs from the same time period and infer that the magnificent structures erected for these occasions were not constructed. Instead, these were Tartarian standing buildings. Governments aiming to obliterate Tartaria from history constructed the world's fair in such a way that they could demolish these structures without raising suspicion. Last words. Tartarian's notion is extremely intriguing. If accurate, it would cast doubt on much of history and modify our perceptions of ourselves. However, many of the reasons in favor of such a society are based on speculation. As fascinating as it would be to have preceded us by a highly advanced race of giants, we need more evidence to support this theory. Questioning is an essential component of research. All major discoveries stem from a desire to learn more. A knowledge that what we know is insufficient, curiosity, and a desire to learn more about issues about which we know little is a positive thing, but it shouldn't lead to haphazard guesswork. That is why the scientific process exists. You double-check facts and data, peer-review papers, discuss hypotheses with experts, and have academic conversations. It's quite intriguing to say the least. As a result, we'll leave it up to you to determine what you think of this long-lost kingdom. Stay tuned for more next time. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up icon. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications for new videos.